Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a failure. For, for more reasons than you might expect, some of you have potentially left in the comments of yesterday's video about the fact I don't have an assistant manager. Yeah, I don't have an assistant manager. Uh, I didn't realize that until now. Just as a little reminder, I am currently recording ahead with videos, so I don't have time to react to comments just because I'm away over Easter. I want to give you guys daily videos still. Maybe it's a good thing I can't see the comments of yesterday's video because I did not realize until now the former assistant manager, Ian Williamson, joined Forest Green. Yeah, our assistant manager, the 25-year-old prodigy, abandoned me to go to League 2 Forest Green. Uh, he did secure last year a 21st place finish. You know what makes this really bad? The fact that he joined them 228 days ago. I'm only just realising now that he hasn't been here for the last half a year. Plus, well, more than a half a year. How have I not noticed this? Now, as a result of that, I have jumped into action. I've gone out and I have found a new assistant manager, because presumably you guys have been spamming the comments about it, probably from numerous episodes. When Aldum's joining us, uh, assuming he gets a work permit, we're currently waiting on that. Uh, it's going to cost us half a million pounds. He's a very good assistant manager. Now, you might be wondering, Jack, why have you already made a bid for him? Why is that not in the video? I played the last half an hour of the save game thinking I was recording and I didn't hit start record. You know how I said I was a failure for the assistant manager thing? Yeah, it's worse than that. I hit, well, I hit start record, but my audio wasn't recording. So I have the video of me signing Ronaldo. I mean, editing Jack, if you want to put in clips of me now reacting to realising I didn't have an assistant manager in real time, feel free to. But yeah, essentially, I've recorded for the last half an hour without sound. I have actually started to do some stuff today. Now, in terms of what that stuff is, uh, I can tell you what it is. A care of Thorns is leaving us. Yeah, I've been t discussing selling him and getting rid of him for ages. Well, actually, no, I've not been discussing selling him. I've just been dis discussing replacing him and making him a backup. But Al Ali have bid £48 million, plus 20% of any pr uh, next sale. I don't think it's even a profit. I think it's just whatever they sell him for, we get 20% of. Which, to be fair, with the Saudi teams, they usually release the players. But we could get some money back there. Nevertheless, £48 million for this guy is great. And in the half an hour that you're never going to see, I may have found the replacement. Now, I suppose the good news is this guy is the only guy who I've actually started to try signing today. So there's not like there's loads to catch you up on. I've spent half an hour just trying to sell players unsuccessfully and sorting out the staff. Ken Ichikawa is here, 26 years old, transfer listed by request by PSG at £40 million. Pounds. I've just made the bid. Oh, we've not even done the contract negotiations yet, so that's some good news. If we just compare and reforms, better mentals, better physicals, Really good vision, really good kind of attacking ability. Not the best when it comes to his technique, but undoubtedly an upgrade. So really, really hoping we're going to be able to sign this guy. I do need to get him more fully scouted just to make sure there aren't any major cons to be worried about. But I really like the look of him. And in terms of what else I did in the first half an hour of the episode that you're never going to see, I've been trying to get rid of some of our youth players uh, to our affiliates in League One. In a dream scenario this year, Carlisle and Horsham of League One both get promoted to the championship. That, that is like my goal for this year. Now, I know originally the dream was to help Chester up the league. Chester are just a lost cause. Ch None of my players want to join Chester anymore. It's all about Horsham. It's all about Carlisle. Believe me when I say I am incredibly annoyed I don't have the actual audio to the recording of me reacting to realising I didn't have an assistant in real time. It probably would have been comedy gold. Maybe it's better just to see it without the sound, knowing the context of the fact I forgot to record the audio. I'm going to run the intro. And then we're going to start today's episode. This is such a weird start to things. Let's get into it. I'm definitely recording my audio. Okay, the audio is recording now. Let's get into it. Please. Yes, folks, how is it going, you lovely lot? Welcome back to Park to Prem. Today is episode 92, maybe? 90? What? 92. 90, say it with assertiveness. 92. The number's different down below. Don't question it. One thing to report immediately here, and I'm not sure if this happened last episode or now, our reputation is officially up to four stars. We are becoming big time. And alongside a new assistant manager, I am signing a load more scouts and sports scientists. So yeah, we're adding to the staff because over the last few years, the board have basically increased the limitations on what I'm allowed. I've not really reacted to it. So I have basically spent a week of pre-season just signing some new 
physios and stuff. Now, as I have already awkwardly mentioned, we have found a new defensive midfielder. I didn't actually really have a plan going into this episode in terms of who was going to replace Fawns, which in hindsight is really, really stupid because I've been talking about getting rid of him for a little while. I should have set up a scouting focus or whatever. You can see here there were some defensive midfielders we had scouted. Ultimately, however, if we sort by value here, you can see with the new four-star reputation, we definitely have some more pulling power. And across all this list, as I scrolled through and hunted through all of them, the man who stood out is the man that we're going in for. It is, he's further down here, uh, the transfer listed, Ken Ichikawa, who I, I assume the bid's going to be accepted. It's not been accepted yet. If we hit continue, I think we're going to be able to have contract negotiations. Indeed we are. Uh, yeah, £40.5 million to this guy. I know what some people are going to think, Jack, he's a defensive midfielder that you want to sign who has gets forward whenever possible. Look, I'll admit it, it's not ideal but it could bring some good vibes. He was actually signed from Kashir Raisol a few years ago for £3.6 million. Was on loan at Newcastle for the year, just gone at £20 million. And to be frank, I just think he makes sense. He hasn't had a great season in the Premier League at Newcastle. I feel like I'm the man to get the most out of him. I am a little bit concerned that he's currently earning £90,000 a week, but I'm hoping his demands aren't going to be too unreasonable. Uh, the good news is they're not actually that outrageous. I'd quite like to get him on a five-year deal, and if I could get him on 90000 that would be a sweetener. Uh, he really wants to be paid £105,000. i would probably go to hundred k on a five-year deal. But you know what? I don't want to risk ballsing this up because having spent a little while looking for a defensive midfielder, this guy is comfortably the best. Uh, yeah, you know what? There's no release clause in here. I could add a load more bonuses and spam stuff, but I'm on my final warning there. I, I just don't want to mess it up. I can't believe, by the way, I never realized that my system manager wasn't here. Presumably last episode when I signed some new scouts like Pavel Nedved, some of you spotted the assistant manager thing and spammed the comment section. Obviously, I can't react to that given the fact I'm pre-recording, so I'm glad I've noticed of my own accord. Otherwise, I really would have looked like well, more of an idiot than I currently look like. We did go into this summer knowing that we needed to make some sales. Just a little reminder, Curlin left last episode for £25 million. Ashley Phillips also left the building for £16 million that could rise to 20 And another player who left in the last week, which definitely wasn't recorded without audio, uh, Jaegers left the club for £6 million. He's heading to Nuremberg, 23-year-old. Uh, not a bad little player. We signed him on a free transfer, but to be frank, he's never going to get anywhere near our first team. So to get a few million for him, him was rather nice. So between those departures and also Fawns, who could be leaving for up to £48 million, as I mentioned, there's definitely some money to spend. I was at one point thinking we'd end up spending £90 million on a defensive midfielder in a similar way to we signed Celik last episode. Of course, Celik has joined us. £185,000 a week. He's probably the reason why players have outrageous wage demands. I would love to find the defensive mid equivalent of this guy, but having looked at those options, it just doesn't exist. And to be fair, here at Rugby Town, we have a great reputation, don't we, for signing Japanese players. Kenichi Kawa is another man to add to the list of great Japanese international players to play for us. I mean, just to be clear, he's no Kieta Miyazawa, but ugh, he's, he's pretty close, isn't he? In, in the Hall of Fame of Japanese football players, not many men are going to get past Miyazawa, to be fair. Now, annoyingly, even if we sell Fawns and then sign a replacement defensive midfielder, we're still going to have a first-team squad of 30 players. I really need to get rid of some players in this list. I'm looking at Kamara. I'm looking at Erton. I'm looking at Hansen as well. They, they need to go. I've tried offering them out. Can maybe their agents help us? FC Copenhagen might be willing to bid 9.5 million. Uh, you know what? I feel like at this point, maybe I just have to take 9 million pounds for Rennie Hansen. We signed him for 550k. He's never played for our first team. It's not an awful sum of money. Erton only joined us in January. I think that was preventing teams making bids for us, but maybe he'll want to leave us now. No, apparently his agent says he doesn't want to leave so soon after joining. And then Kamara is the other man who has this insanely high value, which leads me to think he must have some mad potential, but I just don't see a world in which he fulfills it with us is there any interest in your client apparently paris fc are interested they have a tycoon owner uh, still gonna be a lot of money for them to be able to afford isn't it i guess i can offer him out for an unspecified amount presumably and i, I do try and do this off camera i'm gonna include it today because otherwise people go why don't you try all these different things presumably there's no intermediaries who think they can get a bid in for him 
And yeah, that seems to be the case, sadly. One man who I've not really made up my mind on is David Sinkule here. He could have some mad potential, but I have not been able to give him the kind of first team that will help his development in the last year. We signed him for £9 million, and whilst I could potentially sell him on for some money, kind of want to loan him out. I wonder if we can get him a decent little loan move, somewhere where they'll pay all of his wages, give him some regular first team football. He'd be absolutely quality for like a low-end Premier League team, to be honest, so... I'll be amazed if no one comes in for him. We'll see what we get. And then in terms of other players I might want to loan out, Oravec here, I'm tempted to loan out. There's question marks over his potential, the 20-year-old. You might remember we got very excited and signed him last summer for £4.2 million. Didn't make a single league appearance for us. Is there any transfer interest in him? Apparently there might be a little bit. I struggle to see us getting a £20 million bid. If someone wants to bid that amount, though... I probably will let him go. We'll offer him out. I don't think I've offered him out before and just see if there's any interest in him. Mosquera, by the way, is playing with Ecuador at the World Cup. It must be getting towards the latter stages of the World Cup here. They must be going on a little run. Uh, yeah, Ecuador into the quarterfinals where they play Iceland. That feels like a very unlikely World Cup quarterfinal. You can see here all the second round results. For those of you who want to see what was crackalacking in the World Cup, Italy knocked out by Iceland stands out to me at first glance. And then in the round of 16, here are the matches and how things have gone so far. Uh, Norway, reigning champions, out of the competition. They lost to the Netherlands 1-0. I actually can't believe that I recorded for like half an hour without audio, but the beauty of how I record videos is I do them in chunks. So if I have a failure of some kind during the recording session, of which this is the first one to happen in two years, not everything is lost. Imagine if I sat down for two or three hours, then realized I was muted. Yeah, that would be bad. I'm kind of trying to keep an extra spring in my step of positivity. It will be fading very quickly. I can already tell. Um, we've got various youth players here who have loan offers for them. Espinosa actually has some serious interest from uh, New York. <sighs> Do I just sell him to New York? He's come for our youth intake and our youth academy. I mean, maybe rather than loaning him out, I should just try and sell him on for some money. As much as I love Espinosa, he's never going to get near our first team, is he? FC Copenhagen have made that bid for Hansen. I was promised they were going to make. It's, it's a scam. They want to make a loan offer initially, but then with future instalments. There's an optional future fee of 9.5. There is also future clauses included. So it could climb up to £19 million if they decide to sign him. I mean, you know what? Worst case, he goes on loan to them and doesn't play that much, but maybe develops. Best case, he plays for them, they love him, and then they sign him at the end of his loan and we get a load of money. I feel like that's a win-win. He's got a contract for four years anyway. Also, one more thing that happened in the recording that wasn't was I offered Lee Min a new contract. I want you to go down below the video now. Guess how much I've agreed to pay him. Also, what injuries he got? Okay, two to six days. Imagine if I was giving him a new deal. He's waiting on the work permit and then he breaks his leg. I'll be looking for any way to retract the contract offer. But yeah, down below right now, how much do you think I'm giving him a week wages? Leave a guess. Don't cheat. I don't know if it's a great sign for the upcoming season that we've just lost to Man City in a pre-season friendly 6-2. Yeah, I'm going to try not to read into it too much. It's pre-season. Friendlies mean nothing. Manchester United want to loan Sinkule as a squad player. No, 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 no. I'm not loaning him to Manchester United, but Bristol City can have him as a regular starter. Yes, please. No one considers a bid for Kamara viable, and Thomas also did not attract interest. Stoke and West Brom want him. I mean, is that, an in is that a good endorsement of a player or not? I feel like if Stoke and West Brom want you, you're probably not the sexiest of players. I'll offer him out for £20 million. Apparently some of the teams think his asking price is too high. And as for Kamara... Apparently Paris FC do want him, they just can't afford him. Maybe I can attract them in if I do an offer out to clubs where I offer him out with instalments. Here's what I want. I want 10 million now, and then over two years, 50 million pounds in two 25 million chunks. Those are my demands. Okay, some good news. Lehman granted a new work permit. I believe this contract kicks in at the end of the year. Does it kick in at the end of the year? Yeah, it does. So this kicks in at the end of the current season when we've moved into our new ground and we will have a bit more money to spend because we'll have a, a more steady stream of income. £100,000 a week for him. But it is a five-year deal without a release clause. So I'm happy with that, and Lee Min's happy with it too. Everyone's a winner. Ryusi Ichikawa is the first of a few of our players going on loan to Carlisle as part of our mission to get them out of League One. I feel like this guy should be absolutely insane in League One. My scouts have come back on Ken Ichikawa. They think he's a super consistent player, 
available for way below his market value, and he could generate 2.6 million in marketing. We love marketing here. Right now, no one else has made a bid. I think we've got our defensive midfielder sorted. Misiak wants a new contract. Misiak, last time we discussed contracts, mate, you wanted a release clause. We can't afford it. You've got a four-year deal currently. You've got a four-year deal. You do not need the new contract. You're 19 years old. Don't let, don't let fame, success, and your very good ability go to your head. You're ruining your legacy. Interesting. Leicester City have made an offer to loan David for the entire year, which is kind of tempting. They want him to be an important player for them. They'll pay, 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 uh, pay all his wages. Why is that so hard to say? Um... Do I think he's going to get regular minutes for them over, say, a championship club like Bristol City? The answer is no. I almost would rather the 20-year-old go out and be a star in the championship than really have to battle it out for a first-team spot at Leicester. I know they say he'll be an important player, but they've got a tycoon owner. They have some very high-earning players that they'll want to play. Yeah, I'm not going to do that one. I've also been getting lots of offers on loan for Espinosa. I don't want to loan him to someone in MLS with future fees. I'd rather give him to Carlisle to get them to the championship than take kind of £5 million in instalments. I'm a man of the people. And of course, by people, I mean the people of Carlisle. Uh, Hansen, set to go to FC Copenhagen, potentially going to be worth some big money down the line if they decide to purchase him. And elsewhere, Ichikawa can be confirmed. I'm going to delay it just until Fawns' deal definitely goes through, although even if Fawns' deal doesn't go through, I think we'll sign Ken anyway. I have just noticed <laughs> this. I'm a man of the people, Espinosa, not a man of the people. He, he hates the North, everyone. He's turned down Carlisle. He was on loan with them last year and tore it up, and now he said no, which is just sad, really, isn't it? Right, you know what? I'm going to make him unavailable for loan and sell him to America. I want nine and a half million pounds. Someone better bid that for him. I know I'm not meant to be looking for, like, young players. I'm just, just having a little peek, you know, just see if there's any good young players out there that I should be signing, because... My scouts might have found some people lately, and I just don't know about them yet. I was about to say, like this guy, he's got a valuation of £50 million. Federico, you're good. Not that good. This guy's 19 years old with five caps for Germany. Am I mad thinking he's not actually that good? Did Germany just not have a left back? That is the only explanation I can come up with. Also, 19 years old, he is looking rough. It's that time of the episode again, offering out Jefferson Mosquera and just hoping someone might finally make a bit of near £70 million. Has just dawned on me, Dukanovic is still in the under-21s without a work permit. Let's apply for one and see if he can get it. I do feel bad for Dukanovic. You know, he was, a, he was a useful player once upon a time for us, and I've kind of just forgotten about him and left him here without a work permit. To be fair, he had a lovely loan spell in League One last year with Watford. 57 conceded in 40. Okay, maybe it wasn't that lovely. Espinosa's not had any bids. He wants to discuss his asking price. What does he think a fair price is? You know what? I'm going to be very kind to him. Eight million pounds, William, and I'll let you go. I really, really wanted this guy to be good when he came for our youth intake. And to be fair, he's not an awful player by any means. I feel like if you get eight million pounds for a product of your youth academy, that's actually quite good. It's just not quite the lofty heights we thought he might be. I've been trying to sell Orovec here and I'm just not getting any bids on him. So rather than trying to sell him for a super slashed price, what is probably at this point a better option is to try and get him a loan where he will get some regular first team football. I feel like for a championship club on £10,000 a week, he'd be a pretty decent addition. It might just be the greatest day ever. Dukanovic has been granted a work permit. After a year of being told he wasn't allowed in England, he's now al allowed again. I don't know why I've renewed it, because he's nowhere near our first team. But, I mean, he can play with the under-21, so that's good. I say that like the under-21s doesn't already have just too many goalkeepers in it, but it'll be fine. Okay, Fawns is officially leaving the club. We're going to receive £46 million for this. Like I said, percentage of any next sale of 20%. Unsure how much that could even possibly be. But nevertheless, I think to sign this guy for the price we got him at, which was £11.5 million, to flip him on for close to 50 that's not too shabby. You know what? I will make a pie comment. You're welcome back any time. He appreciates it. It's time to move on. It is a carer. It is. And as one player leaves us, another player joins Ichikawa. We are going to ask for confirmation of this deal. The Japanese in Golo Kante. Kind of. I feel like he's got a bit of Kante energy, you know? He's rapid. He's got good stamina. Great work rate. Can tackle. Can mark. No real ability in the air. But you know what? He'll put in a hard working performance and run around a lot. And that's what we need. 
I mean, how does that look for a start in 11? That looks like a very, very good team to me. Am I, am I just biased? Obviously, there's a bit of a gamble, I suppose, with the youngster Anderson becoming a more regular first team player, but he had been showing some really, really good development. He's just played a key role in the World Cup campaign for Denmark as well, featuring regularly for them in his teen years. Yeah, yeah, I just, I just like that. This is a good team. This is a good. I like the team we've got here. I really don't see any reason why not, especially with Chelik now in the club. This guy, I think, is going to just be a game changer. If he scores goals, we could be in a title fight. That's what I will say. Right now, I've got kind of my preliminary best 11 here. With the bench as well, I still really want to get rid of Mosquera, though. Mosquera just annoys me. He's like a mosquito. I can't get rid of him. Okay, we have got that loan move now confirmed for Sinkule as well. I think that's going to be a really, really good loan move for the Czech international. He needs regular minutes. He's not going to get them with us. I am a little bit concerned about his physicals, meaning he might not shine at the truly elite level. But nevertheless, I think a loan's going to be good for him. We wouldn't be getting bids close to his valuation. I suppose in the dream world, he goes to Bristol City, gets them promoted from the championship, and then they decide to just splurge all their promotion money on him. That'd be nice. Bristol City, take notes. Also, we have got the European South American Club Challenge. I'm not going to bother doing this game in the episode. Uh, <sighs> It, it's just a waste of time, isn't it? It's just a pre-season friendly. And I don't say this to be offensive, but they've got one player in the Media Dream 11, and it's this bloke. This bloke's the only player who apparently gets in the Media Dream 11 ahead of some of our players. It's, it's just a pointless match. I mean, finally, we've got some more bids for Mosquera. Are these bids actually worth entertaining? His valuation is 77 to 87 million. I kind of was hoping for in the region of 60 million, but anything north of 50 million is going to be bloody tempting. Liverpool have offered 31 million pounds. Apparently, he's, his first choice would be Liverpool. I feel like I might be pushing my luck if I ask for 60, but maybe if I just ask for 55, they'll view that as reasonable. Apparently, that's not reasonable. I don't know what to do with Mosquera because I kind of want to hold on to him because of his alleged valuation, but clearly no other teams think he's actually worth that. I'll ask for 49 million off Juve. They've offered 30, uh, 28. How about Juventus? 30 million now and 20 million in six months. How does that sound? They've now just locked in 30. That's not how negotiations are meant to work. You're meant to come to a compromise. He's probably going to be unhappy that I've not accepted that bid for him. I'm going to lower my asking price for him to 65 million and just see if anyone bids that. Might be about to make a mistake here. We'll find out. I am transfer listing Suleimane Kamara. I am desperate to sell him. He's about to turn 22 years years old and I think with that his value is kind of peaking yeah, teams are no longer really going to factor in his potential into any bid they want to make for him because he's very unlikely to fulfill it we need to sell him this summer I need someone to come in and make a bid Leeds have made a bid for Schumacher no and elsewhere we have had some loan offers for Thomas I did say didn't I a championship club for this guy I think would be a pretty good match uh, lots of them want to offer him regular first team football Kilmarnock as well have offered him the loan I would rather I think loan him to a championship club I'll let him have the choice, I think, of all these different offers here. I think there's some interesting options there. Ultimately, he's not going to get near our first team, but I just want him to be going somewhere and playing some football. Also, given the fact his departure is looking likely now, we'll just move him to the under-21 so we can kind of forget about him. And I'll just also do the same with David. Right, why, why is our first team now looking like? How many players? 27. It's still too many. If I get rid of Ayrton and I get rid of Kamara, then I'll be happy to maybe sign someone. No offers for Mosquera, no offers for Hikmet. Annoying. I mean, it's now apparently Juventus and Marseille interested in Mosquera. Maybe if I lower the asking price just to like 60, maybe then we get nibbles. Just noticed here, I have the ability to sell one of the sell-on clauses we have with Indoor. We sold him for £10 million to Wolves. We're due, I think it's 30% of any profit they make on a future sale. He was actually on loan in La Liga 2 last year and played one game. Really hasn't played any football. There's no way in hell they're going to sell him, I don't think, for £20 million. So... Probably worth just selling the claws. Okay, so annoyingly, this European South American club challenge isn't treated as a friendly. So I can't just kind of uh, just continue over it like I would have a pre-season games. Good news is the skin that we have, hashtag ad for the WTCS skin, it has a simulate button. So for occasions like this where I don't want to manage games, and I never use this during the regular league season, but for a game like this one, I just want to keep recording the video. We can just click this button, simulate the results. I'm not even naming a full bench. I'm showing complete disrespect here. I'm auto numbering. We're taking on Atletico Mineiro of Brazil. We should absolutely destroy them. 
we've won 5 0. Uh, Rojas with a hat trick. Welcome back from the World Cup, Rojas. Looks like he has actually declined a bit over the summer, annoyingly. Rojas, man of the match, give him some praise. That was superb. I didn't see any of it, but it was superb. Uh, we, we've won this competition for the first time. Get in there. Worth noting, I did actually just pick a full strength 11 for that game. Ordinarily with pre-season, at least when I'm going over matches where the assistant's taking the games, I just leave the starting 11 not picked. Therefore, he'll just pick the players that are most appropriate to play in terms of fitness and condition. Um, I know some people sometimes get anxious because I'll, in the transfer special, sit here talking about the best 11, kind of click off and continue playing. D don't worry. But when it comes to games, I do just quickly clear the selection so that anyone can play the preseason games. Keep getting bids for Schumacher. These bids are just absolutely pitiful. The 26-year-old still has four years left on his current contract. I don't know why his valuation is so low. I feel like in terms of quality for a backup goalkeeper, he's very, very good. Apparently he's unhappy at the moment. I don't care. Also, more scouts joining us. Everyone loved that. And Wijnaldum joining us. Uh, £450,000. I'm signing Wijnaldum as my assistant manager. Mostly because it's Wijnaldum, but also he is quite a good assistant manager too. Okay, I was just looking at youngsters that we've got scouted here. You know, as you do, I do this periodically. You, you know the deal by now. I just like to look for players. Alexandra Itagiba, uh, 18 years old, left back and right back, Brazilian. He is sensational. Apparently Milan and Napoli have made bids. I'm going to make a bid too. Model citizen as well. I need him. All I'm saying is when you compare him to Mosquera, not a million miles away, like a thousand miles away. But he could get as good as Mosquera and he's three years younger. He has a release clause the other teams haven't triggered. For the sake of four million pounds, I'm just going to trigger it. Hopefully scare away those other teams who maybe can't afford him and, well, steal away the transfer. Uh, apparently he's dubious about joining us. He wants to be a star player. Uh, I've got some bad news, mate. You probably can't be a star player at left back, but I will teach you English. Like, not personally. You don't want to learn English from me. Let me tell you that now. But... Yeah, we'll make it. We'll just say he's a star player. It's a lie, but it's a white lie. If it means he signs for us, it's a, it's a good lie. Five-year deal, £40,000 a week. He's asked for 50. The cheeky bugger. I do, however, really, really want to sign this guy. So with that in mind, I am going to just up everything that we're willing to pay just a little bit. Five-year deal. I know he's not going to be particularly happy about the fact he perhaps doesn't get the first-team football he's promised. But with him joining us, it makes me even more keen now to move on Mosquera. I've been holding out for 60 million. I'm lowering it, everyone. I want this known to the footballing world. 50 million pounds and he's transfer listed. Roll up. Roll up. Well, it'd be kind of funny now as if I sell him and then the young guy turns me down. And I'm just stuck without a player. That'd be annoying. You know what? It's quite soothing, actually, when I hit continue, just seeing when Aldum's face pop, pop up at the top. It's like seeing a familiar friend as a Liverpool fan. Nice have made a loan offer for Kamara. Um, I mean, they want to make him a regular starter and pay a load of his wages. It's not selling him, so it's not the ideal move. But there's no future sale involved as part of the loan deal. He's still got three years left on his current contract. I guess it gives him one last chance to try and salvage his career here at the club. Um, yeah, you know what? He can go to league. We was out on loan last year. He's not a player we depend upon, so I don't mind selling him, or rather loaning him out with a view to sell him. And elsewhere, no offers from Mosquera. Porto are apparently willing to pay 41 million. Of course they are. I mean, ultimately, I don't even really need to sell Mosquera, do I? I've had it mad that I need to sell him. I don't have to sell him. Just could be good to. Okay, Thomas Orovec, he is on his way to Norwich to play in the championship. That is one more of these players clogging up the first team gone. And another similar player who I think is clogging up the first team, and I'm just going to potentially upset him here, is Ayrton. I'm, I'm just going to move him down to the under-21s. I'll send him on an English course. You know, we're trying to sell him, but we'll tell, teach him English at the same time. Um, but yeah, I'm going to move him down to the under-21s. He might complain about this a little bit, but... He's just not good enough for our first team. Doesn't have the potential. Out of sight, out of mind or something. Ah, okay. Uh, Haddad has broken his hand. He's out for five to six weeks. He will miss the start of the season. Schumacher, <laughs> you're definitely not being sold now, mate. Suddenly rejecting all those bids from Leeds and Cope. Seems like a stroke of genius, really, doesn't it? Also, Alex, we'll just call him Alex. Brazilian Alex, you know, it's like a throwback to the old Brazilian Alex. 18 years old, this bloke, waiting on a work permit. We'll find out in four days' time. I think he'll be a really good addition to the team. I like this bloke a lot. There are loads of these young players who are kind of 18 years old with two-star ability and five-star potential. <sighs> I mean, they're the kind of players that I don't need to sign, but obviously with us only having six foreign youth signings and signing young players to sell them on being a good means by which to make money, 
the closer we get to deadline day, probably not today, but the closer we get to deadline day, the more tempted I might be to pick up some of these players just with a view to try and sell them on. Uh, preferably, I will say, obviously, the more affordable ones. Someone like this guy for £4.2 million makes sense. Someone like, well, <laughs> this guy here, Caruso, for £71 million. Not quite as much of a buy-and-look-to-sell-on kind of player, although he is actually quite good, the 18-year-old. I will be very interested once we get the stadium expansion to see how much this graph changes. You can see here the match day and ticket revenue for Premier League clubs. We're rock bottom of this, but we're capped, obviously, at attendances of 5,250 fans. When we expand our stadium, it's going to be five times bigger than that. Probably can't expect it to be five times more match day money, but... Yeah, you'd like to think it'd be a sizable increase and we'd kind of enter uh, maybe in a dream world like behind Everton and Leicester. Probably being a bit too dreamy there. But yeah, we need more than £12 million a year from next year onwards. That will just allow us to scale up the wage budget that little bit more. Obviously, that's the reason why someone like Lee Min, I'm willing to pay £100,000 to start in next year, because there will be an income to supplement that. Is this the most football manager transfer ever? Felix Seals move to Manchester United. Jao Felix... For £15 million, pounds, age 34, is going to United. This does feel like quite a Manchester United transfer, to be fair, doesn't it? This is interesting. Premier League top goalscorer odds. Three of the top six players are ours. Aaron, Rojas, Faye. That makes me feel like we do actually have the ability to win the league if we can just score more than everyone, which is very much the rugby town way. Ah, okay. Uh, Rodriguez out for three to four months with a broken ankle. I kind of wish I had Forms as a backup centre-back right now. I mean, to start the year, we're going to be without our goalkeeper and centre-back that joined us last year. Uh, I guess NDIA at centre-back? NDIA at centre-back. That is going to have to be the play. Has just dawned on me. I don't, I don't have enough centre-backs. I really don't have enough. Matthew Martin is next in line to play centre-back currently, unless I play Lee Min at centre-back. Do I need even have a centre-back? I probably do. I feel like I've been so preoccupied with culling the first team, which to be fair, we have now done. We're down to 25 players with all the players going out on loan and well, me just getting rid of certain players and hiding them. Uh, yeah, I need a centre-back. Kind of badly. I did notice here right away when I got on the scouting overview screen. Huari is available. Flamengo centre-back for £28 million. He is actually very, very good. Like, really, really good. Uh, sadly, Real Madrid have already made a bid for him. Presumably, if I make a bid, I'm not going to be able to sign him over Real Madrid. I feel like that's a safe assumption. But I'll make a bid anyway, just to see how much I'd have to pay him to sign him feel like we might need to go out there and just look at other centre-backs that might be scouted. It is a little bit of a tricky one, this, though, because, obviously, I didn't think we needed a centre-back because I didn't think we'd get a four-month injury to a centre-back. I mean, it does definitely expose kind of a, a shortcoming of the first team, which I think we can fix. I mean, if I really wanted to spend the big bucks, there's some, like, incredible centre-back options out here, but I don't really want to sign a centre-back for £91 million, especially if that's going to limit the first-team opportunities for Rodriguez when he comes back. I feel like I just need an affordable stopgap option. Someone who can challenge NDIA as kind of a centre-back for the next few months. Someone like Park to Prem legend... Gerald Quanza. Yeah, you know this bloke? He plays Liverpool, doesn't he, in real life? Yeah, we've known about him in the Park to Prem universe for a very long time. He has got a relegation release clause active, I assume, of £39 million. Can I just loan him from Brentford for the year? I feel like I want to sign him, but I don't want to sign him for £40 million given the fact he is 31 years old. I mean, someone like Van de Ven might not be an awful option, but those wages, £185,000. No wonder they're practically giving him away. Adam Bradley of Liverpool was a player who once upon a time I was looking at to be a regular starter for us. I'd want him as a backup. I don't want to pay £28 million for a backup. Please don't judge me for the fact I'm just looking at free agent centre-backs. Don't judge me for it, please. Uh, Trevor Chalobah? No, what's happened to his physicals? Oh my word. Ben Godfrey? No, no, not him either. I'm not sure what I was expecting from these centre-backs in this list, but they've all not got legs. So many of the players I'm looking for are really expensive. I'm kind of looking for someone in this kind of price range, around £10 million, but yeah, this is a weird one. Maybe a loan is an option. If I do sign someone on loan, it's very, very likely that I would only use them in the case of an emergency and I'd just let the young Scottish lad we've just picked up go in and play regularly if needed. 
I suppose the question becomes, is there going to be someone at centre-back who I can bring in who's going to be able to contribute immediately as an emergency backup and do a good job? I feel like I'm probably expecting a little bit too much. Liam McGill, interested in a loan. I saw his valuation and thought it'd be good. He's not that great, is he? Yeah, I'll be honest, thoroughly underwhelmed by the loan options available. I'm not sure what I was expecting, to be fair. Would Liverpool just let me loan Bradley for the year? Uh, they want £1.2 million a month. So that basically, they want me to pay them £7 million. No, that ain't happening. I've spent so long looking for a centre-back, I don't feel like I'm any closer to finding someone. I mean, Drew Murray here literally might be the option. Why not get an American in for the American viewers? I feel like that when that's your logic to sign a player, it's not great logic. I mean, Lacroix is available. This guy really is just going to be an absolutely kind of emergency option for me. Can I, can I loan him? I could just loan him for the year. Thing is, I only probably need him for six months anyway while Rodriguez is injured. Also, I don't really want, I don't really want to give him like a permanent fee. I just need a stopgap option, please, Wolfsburg. I can't afford to pay his whole wages. So maybe can I just offer a bit more if he plays regularly for us? I can. I mean, here's the thing, he's going to be unused quite a lot. I've got some bad news for them here. They've kind of been scammed, but I feel like Lacroix probably isn't the worst option in the world. I mean, there's, there's probably a better player out there, but this guy's solid in Football Manager. Granted, he's 34. In terms of the hierarchy for centre-backs, right, you've got Rodriguez and Snedden, NDIA, Lehman, Matthew Martin... And then Cabeza, so I really don't want to have to use at all. And then Arben, who I'm trying to give away. So really, there are five players here. It's just a case of, for an extended period of time, you wouldn't want Lee in there. I mean, how often does a centre-back of yours get injured for four months? With, like, two weeks left of pre-season? Doesn't happen very often. Oh, yeah, we made a bid for Hari. Uh, he might actually want to join us, maybe. Although he does want a lot of money and a release clause. This man is needy. All right, I'll send him on a language course. We could improve the first team. He wants £125,000. Uh, can I can I rejig the budgets slightly? I can. I can. Do I want to? Not really. Um, I mean, ultimately, he's got a bid from Real Madrid. He's not going to join me, is he? Regardless of what I offer here. I can't really afford to pay him what he wants. I'll give him £115,000. If we sign him, I've created myself the biggest headache ever, but I have also signed a really good centre-back for a really good price. I'd kind of like to get him, but I'm going to be realistic here. He's not going to join me. Okay, Lacroix has agreed to join us, so we're waiting on a work permit for that. So the emergency option is here. We have a plan B. Okay, Alex has been granted a work permit. £16 million to this guy is not cheap, but at 18 years old, I think he could be a really good option. Likely to improve a lot. Model citizen personality is the thing that stands out. And also just the fact that his polygon is kind of well-shaped for a centre-back. When you actually look at his attribute distribution, there's not too much he's missing massively to be a great attacking wing-back, given the fact he's 18. Kind of every key attribute could go up by five or six if he is really, really good. And based on what we can see here, if he is really good, and this potential is true, with model season personality, I feel like he's relatively likely to hit it. Obviously, a bit annoying that I promised him he's going to be a regular player. I guess what I could do is, I could play Lee Min at centre-back, and then play Alex at left-back. But Lee, Min, Lee Min's not a centre-back, and neither's NDIA. No, they, they can't do anything in the air. I mean, nine heading, I hate. 13 jumping reach is an awful. NDIA has the jumping reach, just doesn't have... The best heading in the world. Premier League top player odds. Celic is in the list. Celic is really a crazy superstar for us to sign. I feel like I've not gone crazy enough about this guy over the course of the last two episodes. I'm so excited to see how he fits into our system and how he does. If he doesn't perform at striker, imagine him as an attacking midfielder. Like No matter what we do with him, he's going to be incredible. Sorry, I don't mean to be rude here. Loan offers for Mascara. Loan offers. Loans. No. No, 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 no. He's not available for loan, folks. Also, Liverpool make Misiak bid. He's extremely interested in Liverpool and would require some convincing to stay. They're offering £67 million. Um, £67 million. I want 120 I knew they weren't going to accept that, and I know he's not going to accept the fact I've not sold him, you snake. I'm not happy about being priced out of a move for Liverpool. The finances weren't right. Here's my proposal. <laughs> he wasn't happy about the fact I priced him out of the move. Then his suggested price here is higher than what I was offering him out for. You know what, mate? If they bid 110 million, 
I'll sell you. The Football Manager AI logic on some of the kind of asking price stuff is hideously broken and annoying, but you know what? In this occasion, it's working in our favour. I love the fact that just because he's transfer listed, teams now want to loan Mosquera. Like, how does that work? He's unavailable for loan. Leave me alone. 50 million or GTFO. Imagine if Huari picks me over Real Madrid. That, that might go to my head a little bit. If he does that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be very flattered. But I don't feel like it's likely. Okay, Kamara set to join Nice on loan. I'm going to hope they're just in playing regular first team football for them. It's going to aid his development, bump up his asking price and maybe help with his reputation a little bit. Last year was playing in the championship. Liga should put him a little bit more in the spotlight. And elsewhere, Lacroix has been granted his work permit. I'm going to delay this for now just on the very, very slim chance that the bid for Huari works out. But given the fact that Real Madrid are bidding for him... Sneaking suspicion he's going to choose them. France want the space. The je ne voudrais la France. Reject. So, sorry, France. The football season starts in six days. Huari's really wait, making me wait this out. I'm hoping he's going to join us. The worst thing is, but there's probably going to be a work permit as well, if he chooses, to join us. To join it. He's chosen to join. I am shocked. I mean, have I overpaid him massively? Maybe, but he's good, right? I'm I'm sorry to Lacroix. Je ne voudrais vous too. Uh, I don't want him either. I mean, I have just created a headache for myself here by signing another kind of first team quality centre back. But £28 million, it's value for money. He's got insane current ability. And we're without Rodriguez for a few months. So if nothing else, it's just giving us some good depth. I'm trying really, really hard to justify this signing. Huari, £28 million. He is a very good centre-back, right? Like, Brazilian international, already quality. He actually is really, really similar to Sneddon. I bet if I overlay his polygon with Sneddon's, they're, like, almost identical. Yeah, he's, he's very similar to Sneddon. He's not cheap. Think he's worth it. I mean, when they're all fit, I've created myself a bit of a headache, selection-wise. Although Gonzalo Rodriguez, I suppose, can play defensive mid. And Huari can play right back if needed. I'm really trying to justify this. I probably shouldn't have done this deal, but I've got the money. Why not spend it? Now, annoyingly, because the transfers are split over like two seasons, I can't actually tell you the total amount very easily, but it is going to be £95 million plus 85. Quick maths, that is 180. That should be a darts cooler. Yeah, £180 million spent this window. To anyone who thinks I don't spend the big bucks often enough, I think I've done that this season. I feel like Rodriguez with the broken ankle is probably now going to be the third choice centre back, but given the fact he's 22, it's not an awful thing. Not sure if you can hear it in my voice right now. I am starting to feel a little bit sick. I've got this raspy throat and I've got more videos to record before I go away. The good news for us is we've ended things here. I'm not sure if the fever that I've got is impacting my transfer decision making. I'll let you guys be the judge of that. Huari, wages are a little on the high side, but I think for the price we've paid, We've got a very, very good player who can just slot straight into the first team. And also, he's left-footed, so that, that's good. Left-footed, can play next to Sneddon. I feel like I've been forced into a transfer there I didn't know I needed to make, and Gonzalez is a bit of a victim in all of this. But he, he will get game time this year once he's fit. I can't believe I'm doing this to end the transfer window. I think Mosquera's staying. <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe it. Mosquera, no longer transfer listed, no asking price set. He survived. I'm, I am surprised too. I mean, to be fair, there could be transfer offers for him, I guess, between now and the transfer window closing. But if you're going to find out if those happened, you'll have to come back for the next few episodes. Speaking of which, next time out, we've got a game against Liverpool in the Premier League. And then we also have the UEFA Super Cup, ladies and gentlemen. Can we get an ooh? Yeah, we are playing at the Lilkula Stadium in Estonia, the capital Tallinn. So I think we'll be doing an away day there next time too. Anyway, folks, like I've already mentioned in our milk further, I'm really not feeling too well at the moment. So if there's any bad transfers, I'll just blame it on the fact I was ill. But we have soldiered on. We have finished a transfer window. And I very much hope you enjoyed the video. Apologies for the first 30 minutes just not existing with audio. That is completely on me. It's a sign that my head really isn't with things at the moment. And I need to go rest. So that's exactly what I'm going to go do. We should be back tomorrow. I'll see you for part two next time. Other than that, it's me, Jack. I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.